The changing face of the city of brotherly love. U.S. Census data shows the once majority white city has become more diverse over the past couple of decades. I am multiracial, right? I, I understand that my roots have African in it, have Euro European in it. We have Taino. But the road to more integrated neighborhoods remains a bumpy one. Why isn't Philadelphia a city so diverse? Why is it not integrated? Race in Philly explores the divide when it comes to race and neighborhoods. Plus, why some communities say the census has left them uncounted. I always have to go online or I have to talk to somebody to find out what do I, what should I identify myself as? Because they really didn't give you too many options. You're watching Race in Philly, a partnership between NBC10 and the Philadelphia Tribune. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Race in Philly. I'm Jacqueline London. And I'm Johnny Archer, and we are in the heart of Philadelphia, Center City. And behind us is the Ben Franklin Parkway, an area marked with flags from all over the world, a true representation of how diverse this community really is. However, census data shows several neighborhoods are still segregated. NBC 10's Danny Freeman has more. Linda Hanford Bell has lived in East Mount Airy pretty much her whole life. <laughs> For years, she, her parents, and her grandmother walked these same streets along Germantown Avenue, and it was comfortable. What made it special was people cared about each other. For much of that life, she's lived in a majority black neighborhood. Are you feeling that now integration or new levels of diversity happening? No. Over the past half century, Philadelphia has changed in many ways. According to new census data, the once majority white city has become more and more multicultural and diverse. There are now more black Philadelphians than white Philadelphians, and a sizable number of Latinos and more call our city home. But the same census data paints a picture of a deeply segregated city. This map showing where Philly's white residents live, and this map showing where Philly's black residents live. Why isn't Philadelphia a city so diverse? Why is it not integrated? Well, to understand why, we turn to two experts, Gregory Anderson, Dean of Temple University's College of Education and Human Development, and John Landis, a University of Pennsylvania expert in urban and neighborhood change. The Great Migration uh, during the 20s and 30s was primarily African Americans moving from the South to factory districts of the city. But over the years, those jobs went away. Those residents have, have been unable to move to the suburbs. Unable, but often unwelcome, said Dean Anderson. Antecedents of it came from slavery and the reservation system for indigenous people. Um, and then that's played itself out in terms of Jim Crow legislation. And Professor Landis says Philadelphians have been resistant to change. Philadelphia has not been as hospitable to different types of growth coming from outside. Take Mount Airy, a neighborhood recognized for integration, its primary zip code relatively diverse. But if you expand out to the surrounding zip codes, Chestnut Hill and parts of West Oak Lane, the racial and social inequality spikes. It's something that we have to change. We have an obligation to change it. And it's a hard job because people's attitudes and people's preconceptions are, are very strongly baked in. But Landis says other cities have been able to integrate better over the decades, pointing to Houston, Minneapolis, Atlanta. Though Linda feels too often integration is a Trojan horse for gentrification. What they're doing is not diversity. What they're doing is forced displacement. So how can a diverse city of neighborhoods grow more while segregating less. You've got to be willing to accommodate growth, and you've got to make sure that the benefits of that growth are shared among all income and racial groups. Those choices should be based on opportunities for community members to stay because they see themselves reflected in the changes. Developers who really want to help solidify and uh, flourish this area, we welcome them. That requires sitting down. And having a conversation. And having a conversation. Danny Freeman, NBC 10 News. And having a conversation is certainly important. Right now, there is a rise in the Latino population, and community advocates hope that that will translate into more power within government and the economy. NBC 10's Claudia Vargas has a closer look. What started off as a hobby for the Encarnacion family after moving to Philadelphia in 2013? That concept of Helado Chupi Chupi um, was 
from uh, my daughter. Turned into a full-fledged popsicle business. We're planning to move a uh, big lo uh, location because the business, you know, uh, increase. It's an opportunity that Alexi doesn't think would have been possible in his native Puerto Rico. We decided to move here because in Puerto Rico the situation uh, was hard. And it wasn't just the Encarnacion family who chose the city of brotherly love as their new home. Philly's Latino population grew by more than 50,000 or 27 percent in the last decade according to the 2020 census. The surrounding suburbs had even larger Latino population gains and overall our tri-state region gained more than 800,000 Latinos over the last decade. So the Hispanic population pretty much grew in every county all over the nation. And as Meraris Rios of the Census Bureau points out, those numbers will translate to political and economic power. It impacts federal funding, how the, that funding will be distributed. Um, among that population or those communities, but also the representation. For Neil De Ruiz of the nonprofit Asociación Puerto Ricanos en Marcha, the possibility of more political representation at the city and state level is great news. We'll bring up issues and, you know, they listen to us most of the time, but nothing like, I feel like nothing really gets done. She says affordable housing, poverty, and access to government services are among the biggest issues. We still have the highest poverty rate um, among, uh, you know, the population here. And she says getting the resources needed to thrive in Philly can be hard. Many of the services are still provided downtown. Um, many of our community just don't, doesn't go far from their, from their, you know, neighborhood. Most of the Latino growth in Philly was in the north and northeast parts of the city. The Encarnacion family bought a house and run their business out of Philly's northeast section. Alexi says the growth in the Latino population, particularly those from Puerto Rico, has helped his business. The popsicle is part of mm, the island. The culture, right? Yeah. He, like others we spoke with, expect that the Latino population will just continue to grow over the next decade. And he plans to be here for that. No, we plan to stay here a long time. Claudia Vargas, NBC 10 News. In front of the art museum is this sculpture of an Afro pick titled All Power to All People, part of a traveling exhibit detailing the African-American experience. And while black culture makes up the fabric of Philadelphia, census data shows over the past decade, tens of thousands of blacks have left the city. NBC 10's Aaron Baskerville explores the reasons for the change and which areas are actually seeing a boost. <laughs> Inside Hakeem's bookstore on 52nd Street in West Philly, you're walking in history. This corridor historically has been known as an African-American business district, um, and the business district is a reflection of the community that it, it, it exists in. The legacy business has been in the city for more than 60 years. Yvonne Blake, who now runs the family bookstore, tells NBC10 she's seen the changes to the neighborhood over the years. It distresses me because, you know, there has to be a reason why they're leaving, and I think it's because they don't feel like they're being treated fairly, they're being priced out of their houses in some circumstances, and they're just looking for a better life. According to the latest U.S. Census numbers, African Americans are leaving the city. Nearly 44 percent identify as black, but Philadelphia has lost more than 30,000 of these residents from 2010 to 2020, a trend not lost on longtime business owners like Blake. There's a lot of crime in Philadelphia, especially right now, and I think people are looking for better schools, and there's just a lot of red tape and politicking going on here that I think is affecting people. At the same time blacks are leaving the city, some of the nearby suburban counties are seeing a boost. In Delaware County, according to census numbers, there were a little more than 110,000 African Americans there in 2010. That number jumped about 19,000 in 2020. I love the trees. I love the quietness that we had out in, in Montgomery County. That was, that is the biggest thing for me the noise and the crowdedness. Brandon Cavanaugh is one man leaving his center city spot for a home in King of Prussia, Montgomery County. It's seeing the same pattern as Delaware County. In 2010, more than 69,000 blacks lived in Montgomery County. Last year, that climbed to nearly 81,800. I see more black people going out to the suburbs. Uh, I work in Doylestown, so I'm seeing more of, of black population stores, um, 
you know, shopping. But not all these counts are necessarily accurate, according to Diana Elliott with the Urban Institute based in Washington, D.C. Her organization did a study on the census and found some communities were most likely undercounted. For blacks in Pennsylvania, the undercount could be about two and a half percent. That means more African Americans could be in Philly, but they just weren't counted. There's a lot of money riding on this, right? I mean, aside from political representation, which is really, really important here, um, people really don't know how much federal funding is really based on, on census counts. And it's, it's to the order of billions of dollars and not just billions of dollars just once. This is every every year in a decade. Because of several factors, Blake believes that undercount could take a while to change. Well, there's a distrust factor there, and that's why a lot of people don't want to fill out questionnaires. They don't know what the government's going to do with them, especially minorities have been treated so unfairly over the years. A changing landscape in the Philadelphia area, no matter how you slice it. Aaron Baskerville, NBC 10 News. Other diverse groups are driving growth in the population in the Philadelphia region, but community leaders believe is attracting more Asians to the area. And the fight to be counted, the ongoing problem people of Middle Eastern and North African descent face when filling out the U.S. Census. You're watching Race in Philly, a partnership between NBC10 and the Philadelphia Tribune. You're watching Race in Philly, a partnership between NBC10 and the Philadelphia Tribune. Other diverse groups are helping drive growth in the Philadelphia region. U.S. Census data shows a jump of 39% in the Asian population living in the city as well as the suburbs. That's an increase of 37,000 people. NBC10's Rosemary Connors has more. When we saw the census report, it just reaffirmed what we knew as an organization, that number one, the population in the city is growing. Number two, the immigrant community that we serve is growing. As the executive director of the Philadelphia Chinatown Development Corporation, John Chin leads the 55-year-old nonprofit that helps the immigrant community here find employment, housing, and services. Born and raised in Philadelphia's Chinatown himself, the oldest Chinatown in America, he believes people are tribal and the city of brotherly love has plenty to offer. Word of mouth is a powerful marketing incentive. More so than the city can do to promote Philadelphia as a destination, it's really word of mouth. Mouthwatering is one way to describe the Sichuan cuisine at Imei restaurant near 9th and Arch Streets. That we have as a chance day. Imei's owner, Dan Sao, also publishes two weekly Asian newspapers in the region and is not surprised by the 39% increase in the Asian population here. He tells me there are thriving Asian ecosystems from the city to the suburbs. For the Korean community, you have, you know, Atkins Park, you have the Abu Dhabi. For the Vietnamese community, you have, you know, Washington Avenue. It's a South Philly. A taste of home is certainly enticing to international students. They drive much of Dan Sao's business as the region is a hub for higher education. Philadelphia has a very strong uh, universities. University of Pennsylvania, UPenn, uh, Temple, Drexel, Villanova, etc. And uh, in suburbs, we have Swarthmore, we have Haverford College. For the past 10 years, the top five countries come to, like international students come to the uh, United States is from all from Asian countries. Holly Mang of Temple University's executive leadership and global collaboration team has watched the school's international student population double in the last decade. The culture and the art is here. Histories, everything is very attractive. We have a good education here in Philadelphia and now we also have a lower living expenses. <laughs> This growth comes at a time when Asian hate crimes are on the rise across the country. Philadelphia has seen some of it, but the community is speaking out, raising its collective voice. Having your voice heard is really important. We've learned over the decades that we've been here in Philadelphia that if you don't have a voice at the table, um, no one's going to pay attention to you. And as the population grows, more seats are opening up at the table. I'm Rosemary Connors, NBC 10 News. Cheers. Cheers. John Chin also tells us that since the U.S. Census recorded 10,000 Chinese residents in Philadelphia, now Chinese language must be included in voting material. Imagine not being counted. 
I'm here alongside the Ben Franklin Parkway in Philadelphia, and behind me is a Lebanese flag. People of Lebanese descent are instructed to check off white on the U.S. Census like so many other people of Middle Eastern or North African descent. But some people don't identify themselves that way and would like their growing population to be counted properly in Philly. Well, the U.S. Census might be working on that for the 2030 Census. I was born in Lebanon. My father immigrated here in 1970. This is Namura. Worked, saved money, bought a house. Immigrated my parent, my mom and my brothers and I here in 1972 and have been living here ever since. At the corner of 10th and Federal Streets in South Philly, Batars has been offering Middle Eastern and Mediterranean food to people for nearly 50 years. My parents started the business in 1974 because they got tired of working nine to five for somebody else. Uh, saw a need for the community, and we've been at it ever since. Amin Batar's Lebanese family story is a fabric of America. But every 10 years, his Lebanese identity goes unchecked on national records. And so does an estimated 3.7 million Americans that trace their roots to an Arab country, according to the Arab American Institute. Every time the census comes out, and I've filled out quite a few over the years, um, I always have to go online or I have to talk to somebody to find out what should I identify myself as because they really didn't give you too many options. So we always went with white. Everybody likes to be identified as who they are. Marwan Creedy is a Middle Eastern expert and Lebanese American living in Philly. You know, I get calls from all over and people came up to me and say, well, why aren't we listed? He explains the importance of being identified on the census. It distributes federal dollars based on how many people live in what areas. That becomes difficult to do without the option for people of Middle Eastern or North African descent known as MENA. A sample from the 2020 census instructs people of MENA background to check white as their race. There are some 25 to 30,000 Arab Americans living in the Philadelphia area. It's important for us to have a MENA category, Middle East, North Africans, in order to find out statistically where our people are. We have no uh, specific category now and we're considered Caucasian. And what that does, unfortunately, it doesn't allow us to dig into the data. And it's important to dig into the data to find out where we are. A 2015 Census Bureau study found the number of people of Middle Eastern or North African descent who checked white dropped from 85 to 22% when MENA was added to the survey. Adding the category has been a debate for more than 20 years. Census officials have cited MENA as an ethnicity not a race as a reason for not adding the option. But they say it's something they're considering. It's about time for, for the people responsible to kind of figure out that you have such a diverse community living that make up the 330 plus million people that live and breathe in this country. Well, everybody's needs are different. So how do you do that if you're just generalizing under race as opposed to breaking it down to ethnicity as well? Getting a better view of America. The number of people identifying as multiracial has skyrocketed. How it's leading to new conversations about diversity and inclusion. You're watching Race in Philly, a partnership between NBC10 and the Philadelphia Tribune. You're watching Race in Philly, a partnership between NBC10 and the Philadelphia Tribune. Philly is a city of diversity and people representing multiple cultures. This amour sign, meaning love in Spanish, is a companion to the love statue in Love Park. U.S. Census data shows people identifying as multiracial increased 276% in just the last decade. And experts say it's shifting the conversation about race and identity. Johnny Milcrespo has a closer look. Hey. It's beautiful to be able to, for me to um, showcase who I really am, um, this caramel man from, from North Philadelphia. Born in Caguas, Puerto Rico, Joseph Valentin came to Philadelphia when he was two years old and has lived here ever since. Here in Philadelphia, I'm a Puerto Rican, people see me as a Puerto Rican, but when I go and visit my family in Puerto Rico, I seem to be the... El primo de los Estados Unidos, right? Which means the cousin from the United States. And that is part of who he is and has always embraced, including his bilingualism. 
at home in order to survive, to eat food or just to communicate, I had to learn Spanish. Growing up in the Kensington section of the city, he felt he could relate to the predominantly Puerto Rican residents that lived in the neighborhood. I remember Saturday mornings listening to my dad putting on salsa music and my mom putting on merengue music and, you know, you felt a good you know, a good vibe of your culture. That's why when it was time to fill out the 2020 census, he was glad for the change that allowed him for the first time to be specific about where he comes from. And to be able to say, you know what, I am multiracial, right? I, I understand that my roots have African in it, have Euro European in it. We have Taino. In fact, it's giving us a clearer view of the diversity that exists in the United States and in our cities. The census revealed that nationwide, the population identifying as multiracial grew by 276% over the past 10 years. The number of Hispanics or Latinos reporting more than one race jumped 567% from 3 million to 20.3 million. And in Philadelphia, those identifying as two or more races increased by almost 93%. For the first time, individuals had an opportunity to be more detailed in selecting who they are and where they come from, right? So if you selected Latino or Hispanic, you also had an opportunity to select your race so that you could say, I'm Latino and I am white. I'm Latino and I am black. Uva Cole, founder of Inclusiva, a consulting firm focused on inclusive of workforce solutions says that's not all that made an impact. In the last few years, there's been a movement that has really opened the door to allow us to speak about our identity in more detail. Joseph now a professor at Esperanza College of Eastern University teaching English and Spanish, has noticed a shift in his classroom. I do see more open conversations. I do see more students today uh, become more transparent about who they are and how they identify themselves within their nationality. It was different for us back then. It wasn't really talked about. We were put in, a, in this box. A box he hopes is now wide open and more inclusive. Jai Macrespo, NBC10 News. We invite you to join the conversation about race. Resources are right at your fingertips. Books to read, experts to follow. You can view other episodes of Race in Philly at NBC10.com slash race101. Thanks for watching Race in Philly. I'm Johnny Archer. I'm Jacqueline London.